Well, good morning, everybody. It's November 21st, 2024, coming at you and reporting to you from Quartzsite, Arizona. And I'm going to start with the weather. And here's something that I noticed out in the desert here. You go on your app, the weather app, and you put in Quartzsite, Arizona, and I think it's measuring what's happening in town. And it says the, the current temperature is 41 in town. But if you look at my um, temperature sensor, it's 37. And that's routine. I've noticed that for years, that there can be many did like four or five degree differences between sitting out here in the desert and sitting in town. So it's 41 degrees outside. That's a chilly over, overnight temperature. Today's high is going to be 75 degrees with slightly cloudy skies. Tomorrow, 76. Saturday, 79 under sunny skies. Sunday, partly cloudy, 73. The lows are edging up. The low is showing uh, it, it's uh, 43 today, even though the Weather Channel saying it's 41 now. So they missed that mark. Uh, 49, 56, 52, 52 in the ensuing days. So I imagine I'd shave five degrees off all those numbers for here. So that would put it at 45, 51, 48, and 48. Um, through Monday. But these are ideal conditions. I mean, it, it, it's really wonderful. I, I, and let's take a look at the wind forecast for the day. Um, we have a peak of eight miles per hour uh, mid-afternoon today, tomorrow, um, peak at mid-afternoon six miles per hour the next day, five and four miles, no, no, nine miles per hour the next day at two o'clock. Um, Sunday, early in the morning, 11 miles per hour, but later in the day in a partly cloudy day, high of eight miles per hour. So, you know, that's something you got to pay attention to. That's a really integral part of the weather because the temperature can be great, but if the wind is really high, it's not all that comfortable being outside. That's why people, a lot of people, um, camp in groups and they'll, they'll camp almost like in a square so they can have like campfires and hang out in the middle and have their rigs act as wind blocks. Smart people do that. We sort of do it here. I'm kind of off by myself, but I have a, um, a windbreak kind of device that is semi-effective, but it's not as effective. I've been in camps where four people have made a square and even high winds, they're perfectly comfortable in their little self-made courtyard. <clears throat> so, um, let's see, uh, on my new to Quartzsite desert camping, don't make this rookie mistake. That was a, that was a big one. That was a few weeks ago. That's got like 15,000 views. And a Betty Y says, do you add doggy vitamins to the homemade food? And I say, I do not, but I'm looking into it. And she said, I want to feed my dogs human food, but nervous, understandable. And my advice, my expert advice is talk to your vet. <laughs> I bet they have really great advice for you. Um, I'm feeding Dottie 93% um, lean ground beef, slow cooked with um, peas and carrots. Generally, that's the typical, um, a little under a cup twice a day. And I cover that um, in detail with my vet and my vet um, thinks that Dottie's doing great and that's great nutrition. I am interested a little bit um, on these, the like Amazon, they sell supplements for when you're making um, homemade dog food. And uh, Cheryl recently got some and I thought I'd look into it, but I will check with my vet before I give something different to Dottie. Hiker97, can anyone use the dumpsters at the LTVA sites or is it exclusively for paying customers? Are there posted rules expressly saying for paying customers only? Um, that rule is not posted, but it's for paying customers. And in La Posa South, for sure, there's a guy, the dump station's right next to the dumpsters. And uh, I've seen the guy run over there and check tags. So they, they, you need to pay. You need to have a tag. Um, the transfer station for the town of Quartzsite is free. Just got to know where it is and what the hours are. Philip Williams, DG markets are good when they're not near groceries like Walmart or other chain grocery stores. Quality isn't there on meat and produce, but it works in a pinch. I should add, I posted this before washing. It's my own personal experience with DG market. 
And then he posts, I might add, as I watch this, the meats are mostly hamburger, sausages, hot dogs, and yes, lunch meats like bologna, ham, turkey, like Armour, Oscar Mayer, and their own brand. Yeah, he's saying that because the meat rack was like totally empty, and I was kind of reduced to reading the individual tags to see what they would stop, stock. And if they had hamburger, I missed it, but I, I didn't look at every single tag. Um, Randy, um, son surprises dad. I love this positive news story where this um, son buys his father his long last cherry Camaro that he had before his son was born and had to sell it to take care of his family. And the son went out, not only bought one, but talk about this act of love. He bought one and then restored it himself and gave it to his dad. Randy says, I love the story. He had a good father. Not everyone has such a selfless, responsible, loving father. And honoring him in such a thoughtful way, I can guess he raised a wonderful son. No doubt about that. Um, so on my visit to the DG market, it stands for Dollar General Market. It's a brand new um, market this year in Quartzsite. So I did a little tour. Phillips, a question. I don't have a water system as I'll be in an SUV when I get there. Are there decent car washes and do they have doggy wash stations? We have a car wash with a doggy wash. It's enclosed, has a clean table and soap and, uh, and whatnot to clean the dog. It even has a hair dryer. It would be cool if there's one just for convenience. And I said, no car washes, but Pat, Pat Patio in Tyson Wells has a pet wash. It's right on the main street. It's right on Kuhn Street. Um, as, you, as you come in from Central, it's on the left-hand side. You'll see the big K and B signs. Then there are a bunch of tents in a row. And that's where you're going to find Pet Patio. And she also does, she sells pet supplies, but she also does um, pet washes. Nice little stations back there. And for a very reasonable price, she'll um, trim nails. And that's where Dottie gets her nails trimmed. Um, Mark Aloni, and, and I don't know what's Marcel only. It's Marcel only. When it's all smashed together, it's it, it, the the word the it, it's hard to get the handle correctly. I walked down yesterday, Tuesday to DJ. Found it was a good store for the queue. More stores is good. Plus, it's a good hike for me from Shady Lane. I mean, Shady Lane RV Park. How far from camp to store? That's from Scott Peterson. I want to use a motorcycle for food runs. That store is four miles from my camp at La Posa South. Okay. <laughs> Kathy Renee, thanks for the tour of uh, DGM. Glad to see more grocery op options in queue. Um, Janice Kazoon, talk to people out there. Have them write or email their congressman or woman. Um, and Senator urging them to oppose the raising of the LTVA fees. They, you, could cite the lack of affordable housing, and that's why so many people are living as nomads. And before I read my response to this, I want to say I have heard, I have seen so many completely useless, angry comments on the raising of the LTVA, the proposed raising of the rates. This one, however, I will quote for myself. Janice, I have to say this is the smartest comment on this topic I have seen anywhere. Thank you. She's she's against it. Who isn't against it, right? Other than, you know, we have some feelings about we, they need to get the money, they need to maintain the place. But um, no, I pay $180 for the season. Is there any part of me that's happy about paying 600 if that proposal goes through no but <clears throat> she expresses her displeasure gives reasons and gives you something to do and trust me i believe this that um government officials elected officials if they hear enough from their constituents on something they pay attention they 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 want to get elected I mean, lobbyists and, you know, companies and rich people. Yeah, they're able to give them money. They're not able to give them directly votes. Remember that. Um, think about how, you know, how much money losing national campaigns spend and they don't get the votes. They don't, it did, the, the, if you spend a billion dollars and you don't get the votes, 
What's the billion dollars worth? Charlie, while in the area, did you check out Lava Lens RV Park just down the street? Was wondering how they compare. I'm like, wait a minute. And then I looked at the, it was Review Grants New Mexico KOA. That's a, that's a, a, uh, uh, a, a video that I did. Um, I've done a couple of reviews on that KOA. It could have been last year's or the year before. And I'm saying, sorry, did not. I didn't. I don't, I've never heard of that RV Park. Sorry. Um, Quartzsite DG Market, RV Life 289 says, I appreciate your positivity. Thank you. And then Cat De Cat Deaver, new to your channel and love your attitude. Like the way you show the area. Love Dottie too. Uh, and I said, thank you. That was on the Quartzsite visit to DG Market. Randy, and please, this is on Sun Surprises Dad. Please realize many of us feel we could have done more. It doesn't mean it wasn't enough by any means. I found that sometimes the smallest of gestures have meant the world to others. Yeah, I get it, Randy. You're right. Um, I was saying at the end of my video about that extraordinary thing a son did for his father. I made me think of my dad. You know, I was pretty choked up trying to report this story and it's like this did guy just did such a grand gesture of love for his father and you know i gotta ask have i ever done a grand gesture like that for my dad no i never did it's you know it's too late it's 20 years um and randy's right there there I've, I've i've lots of small gestures for my dad um i know i touched my dad in pretty profound ways um over those years and she's right I just wanted to feel sorry for myself a little bit. I guess that's what that was. Um, I was a little jealous, too. A little jealous, I guess. Um, Ken, wonderful gesture on the same video. Yeah, I, I knew you'd like that, Ken. Um, Phil C., I love the idea of an infrared heater with thermostat, but in our 2023 Travato Class B, there's no room for such a large heater. The Camco small one fits better. Um, and I said to him, the footprint is very close to the Wave 6, if you're thinking about a 6. If you're thinking about a Wave 3, um, yeah, it's a lot smaller. But um, I had a Wave 6, and the, the, the one that I ended up buying ended up being very close to that footprint. But... Um, uh, you know, he, he, here's what I meant by heating my RV boondocking in quartzite. Um, mine, not yours, mine, my situation. And I gave you the things that I tried and the experiences that I had. And everyone else is going to have different circumstances, different sensibilities, and sometimes differing beliefs. So it wasn't a video to say how you should hate your, it's, it's, it's not at all. It wasn't how you should do it. It was a video about how I did it in case you're interested. In case someone says, boy, that sounds like my circumstances. That sounds like I've had all these problems that he had and maybe his solution will work for me. That's all. I'm not preaching. Ken, one of the things I like about YouTube is the author's ability to moderate the comments. I can find a lot more positive channels that way. Um, and I said to him, man, you know, Ken, I had, I had several very negative comments on this business, on the, the DG market. There are places to go to get reviews other than here. Um, a wise coworker suggested it is a great idea to expect the best intentions of others, including businesses, until proven otherwise. And that's my philosophy here. Um, and uh, Debbie, 5293. And by the way, in case you didn't understand what I meant when I said there, there, are, there are places to go to get reviews. My channel doesn't, I don't do reviews of businesses. I bring you with me and I share my experience with the business and I choose not to emphasize any of the negative. Um, you know, if, if I go into a business and it's an absolute disaster, guess what? There's not going to be any video. Um, you know, if I went into G DG Market, the new market in town, and all the shelves were empty and they were just, it was a disaster, I'd just say to myself, there's thinking the highest and best of them and think, they're not ready. Something's gone wrong. I'll come back later. 
And if it never recovers, then that business is going to be around long. It's not going to be relevant. And, um, you know, if it's that obvious, people can find out for themselves. I'm not going to be the one to put that out there publicly. Um, Debbie loved the video and how much Dottie loves love it there. And Ken says, um, <laughs> laugh out loud. this is both on the DG market video. Ken said that alarm went off and I went to check my carbon monoxide detector. Yeah, while well, I was in there filming, their alarm went off. It was kind of jarring. Robin Rappaport. Um, this will just give a little bit more variety out there. I like shopping at Roadrunner and Coyote. I enjoy supporting small businesses. If you ever want a good potato salad, Roadrunner has an excellent one, has bacon in it. Well, Robin, that sounds pretty darn good. 2003 DDJ on the same video. It's estimated quartzites gets a million visitors during the winter. If um, half of them spend $180 just in camping fees, that's $90 million. I'm curious as to BLM and I during Snowbird Tourism, is there such a thing? And uh, DDJ, I'm, I can say with a high degree of certainty that half the people that come to Quartzsite, half the half the million, 500,000 people, um, they don't go to the LTVA. It's a, it's a, it's a small minority slice of that. And I don't know the numbers, but they're available online. You can, um, the BLM produces annual reports and, uh, um, I'm not really motivated to go dig up those reports again, but if you're curious, go look. Um, there's nothing close to $90 million. Um, and the idea that they're raising the rates because they're going broke and can't afford to keep things up, I, I believe it. It's real. They haven't raised rates since 2008. Shame on them. Um, this is on Heating My RV Boondocking and Website. Thanks for the visit to the store on Gas Heater. Everyone's need is different. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yes, that. Everyone's need is different. You have a great solution to save battery power and propane for your use. I have a different need. I use my 21-foot trailer in the summer from May to October in Colorado. National Forest Earth Campgrounds using my 900 watts of ground-mounted solar panels flat on the ground in my gas furnace rarely. In January 2025, I'm traveling to Quartzsite for one month at LTVA South La Posa, where I'm camping right now. I will use my gas furnace and bought a buddy heater as backup. I wake up early every day and may use my buddy heater when I get up on, on cold days. So, someone that watched my video said, Nice video. I appreciate that. I have a different solution. I have different beliefs about what's going to work for me. And here they are. Couldn't be more kind, pleasant, informative, and given it, 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 another perspective that's going to be valuable to other people, as opposed to just being kind of rude <laughs> the ones I had to delete. But Robert Burns is a nice human being that's smart. Comments video. Randy says, very good comments that are informative and helpful. Uh, Bob Martins. Um, I'm in this, uh, I'm the same since I retired. I went to Arizona for the winter up at 5 a.m. and asleep by nine. Feel fantastic. Yeah, Bob. I don't know. I didn't plan it, but you just said those are pretty much my hours. Um, asleep at, like it's 615 right now. And I've been so I got up just before, oh, uh, probably 5.30. Because I, I like before I do this, I get everything done. I get cleaned up. If I need to take a shower, get dressed, clean everything up. Um, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. It, it, I feel fantastic, too. Um, <laughs> Bill Wright says, wife just asked me, tongue in cheek. Do you think he takes a nap in the afternoon since he gets up so early? Do you? Here's my response. What happens in my recliner stays in my recliner. All right. Well, who's next? I enjoy your long and short videos. You and Russ with RVR TV 
are my favorite. I hope to see and meet you guys in a couple of years. Um, that, thank you. That's a, quite a compliment. You put me in a sentence with RV or TV and um, I'm complimented. I like Russ. Um, I met him last year. Ken Gray, thanks for the daily weather report. I'm very glad you decided to accommodate that request. Yeah, it feels good doing it. Doing a little expanded weather report and tweaking it to the actual conditions out here. Was, I can't remember who it was that asked me to do it, but thank you, whoever you are. Ken Gray, sleeping temp. You like it kind of cool. I'm in Florida. I like it about um, 78, 79 um in fahrenheit for myself sleeping i was i was saying i like it at 75 and boy did i get flamed by people to, to the extent i had to delete the comments that they felt it was inappropriate a bad idea and stupid for me to sleep at 75 degrees i forget where the quote comes from but they said people they're the worst <laughs> some comedian said that people are just the worst <laughs> um, Trish Robbins says, correct me, but doesn't CO and propane fall to the floor? I keep my detectors at knee level. And this is complicated stuff, guys. So I said, propane, yes, CO, no. And then I thought better of that. Why should she trust me? It's her life. So I, I, I commented with a, a direct quote from the EPA. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency recommends placing a carbon monoxide detector on a wall about five feet above the floor or at eye level. If you mount the detector on the ceiling, make sure it's at least six inches from the wall. Um, and absolutely, and it didn't mention propane, but like the built-in propane detectors in all the RVs I've ever seen are on the floor. Right. So hopefully I answer her question in a convincing, competent way. Lungs at large um, on DG Market. I like this store as well. Does anyone know where to find two chicks elderly and pear martini in four pack cans anywhere nearby? <laughs> I didn't answer that because I have no idea what she's talking about. It's some kind of liquor. Um, and this Lee in Wisconsin says, does your wife know you're looking for two chicks? That's pretty funny. <laughs> M. Campbell, um, on comments video, I've never been able to figure out why some people take a simple difference of opinion as a personal insult. They're rude and uh, vitriol, vitriolic replies accomplish nothing but make them look like hate-filled, miserable people. Um, and Lunds at Lunds says it's a lot harder warm than the temperature makes you think it is. I don't know what that means. It's a lot harder warm than the temperature makes you think it is. It almost seems like this young girl when I was in my 20s, I worked with her and we're sitting having lunch on the banks of the Charles River during work. <laughs> and she says, she looks at me and she says, says, picky is as picky does. And I looked at her and I said, what the heck does that mean? She says, it doesn't mean anything, but doesn't it sound like it means something? Picky is as picky does. Um, and if you really start think, you go, well, that must let, and you break it apart, the sentence apart in your head, and you try to figure out what it means. <laughs> There's nothing there. But I'm sure Lons was trying to make a point. I'm just, maybe there's a missing word. Does it mean that it's, when you look at the temperature, it's actually warmer than what the temperature... I, I, I give up. I give up. Um, I'm sure they meant well, though. Kathleen Ryan. I am new to subscribe to your channel. I really enjoy your videos and getting to see what is happening there at Quartzsite. I'm thinking about going there maybe next year. I'm not sure about how I would do without electricity. How are you able to watch TV? Legit question. I stream using the internet. Some out here get digital broadcasts, but I've had no luck even getting a single channel. Then I've talked to other people out here in the LTVA. Maybe they have better antennas, and they say they get broadcast TV just fine. But with my little antenna and my little Winnebago Micro Mini, I don't get it. None. Not a single channel. I try every year, thinking maybe this year will be different. 
Uh, Pat Mullen, Rob, do you have a cover? Do you have to cover your heater when not in use? I'm thinking of replacing my Wave. That has to be covered because of dust getting in the mat. A higher BTU output available on the heater, you, um, you would be nice. And the stat is a big plus. Thank you. Um, I do cover my heater for storing in the summer. I covered when I had the Wave like you. Um, I, I would cover it when not in use during the winter because that is that is a problem for them. It's not really a problem for the Empire. Um, and I didn't mention this, and this makes me think of it. If you need service on your Wave, there is no local shop anywhere in the country that can do it because I had to have service on my... Um, I was having trouble with my Wave 6, and I had to ship it to them, and they sent me back a brand new one. Um, it took a while, but and I had to pay for the shipping, and I think it was... 30 some odd dollars um, and they paid for the shipping back um, and gave me a new unit but the Empire not only can it be repaired it can be repaired where I bought it at RV, RV Lifestyle so that was a big plus for me Michael Guzzleman Gunzelman Diesel heater does require a five inch -ish hole in order to mount the unit once you have this hole the unit takes an uh, Take air and out via this opening. Mine is mounted on the floor and out of the way. Um, yeah, uh, people have mentioned diesel heaters. And that is not an option I've tried. And one of the reasons I haven't tried it is that reason you have to like put a hole in your RV for the vent. Um, there may be some window mounted ones or I, I just, I, I don't know. Um, but they're supposedly energy, very energy efficient, very reliable. Um, and because of the venting, you, you know, there is zero really worry if it's functioning properly and it's installed properly, the zero world of worry about carbon monoxide. Um, so it isn't something I can speak really intelligently on. And the reason I didn't try it is I don't want to put a giant hole in my RV for something that may or may not be good for me. The Mad Camper. Um, Rob, I just have, this is a walk with Dottie video from the other day. Rob, I just have to say, I've been a big fan sub for a long time and I've known that you're probably one of the most intelligent creators out there. Well, that's quite a compliment. Then I read your summary resume just now, and it came together. Um, by the way, I own a copy of the DSM, DSM-5. I hope to run into you at uh, DG sometime in a few years after I go full-time. In um, Do you mean Dollar General? After a few years, I go full-time, finishing up pancreatic cancer treatment. Um, yeah, it's been fun, but I installed Dell stuff all the time through my computer support company. I worked for Dell. You saw in my resume. Anyway, would love to sit by a fire and share stories. Thanks for all the work you do on here. It's not always easy. I know. Happy trails to you and Dottie. Nicely done. Oh, and George, I'm a dog guy. Thanks and good wishes on successful finish of your treatment. It sounds like, from what he said, um... Finishing up pancreatic cancer treatment. So that sounds positive and let's let's hope so um, So back to the heating my RV uh, Larry Ritchie said there are two 10,000 BTU units. So what's the difference also one on Amazon? Also the one on Amazon is for natural gas um, They they do have a version for natural gas and one for propane same model Um Larry Ritchie has a smaller footprint, so more expensive. That's what, that's what they told me. Um, and he said, I'm going, I did my research going with the Mr. Heater 30,000 BTU ventless for less money than this one. I have a small house. I'm not familiar with that. So that could be like, that could be a really good option. Um, the Mad Camper. Thanks, Rob. I'm doing okay. And by the way, the goal of my channel is to bring smiles to people going through treatment. Also, the community is empathic and amazing doing it has been my therapy anyway thanks again you're welcome mad camper um edmund new sub edmund Keno, new subscriber i enjoy your videos and dotty too i'm coming in december this will be the first time without my boy paco a rat terrier uh, 
Thanks for the fun and entertaining video. Fast Eddie from Florida. Truck Camper. Fast Eddie. That's a great nickname. Uh, Philip Williams. In comments, I had a bad time with an air leak in one of my tires. This is, I, I remember this. This is a good, listen to this comment. It's long, but it's worth it. I called around a few shops and they couldn't get me in today. So I patched my own tires before, so I went that route. I ended up not getting the plug in as far as it should be, and it began to fall off. I went directly to the nearest car shop, and they said they were full. Try tomorrow. I asked another local shop, went there, and the lady said, we're full up. So I asked for some air. They obliged. Guy giving me air, I told my story to. So he's like, man, I'll take care of that. Back your car up. Did so. He patched my tire, not for free, but he put off his other work to do it. I was so blessed and grateful. And I responded to him. I said, there are kind people in the world. And Phil's been paying attention and he knows what I value. And that's that's like a positive, an extra bonus positive news story. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. All right. Whoa. I clicked in the wrong place. Oh, I give me a minute. Sip your coffee. There's a lot of lot of um, there's a lot of comments. So I know it's been thirty minutes already. Um, okay, I'm back. So beet farmer. Um, so I, I'm gonna guess beet farmer does he did he must do the beet harvest. That's a good way to make money and what beet farmer in like six weeks or something a few the two or three thousand dollars working doing beet farming um and if you're interested in that at the big tent show they have companies that hire you to do beet farming so a lot of people will do short stints on the road to pile up some cash and then camp and have a life of leisure for a while and then do another job and anyway best quartzite videos on the youtube <laughs> That's what he said to me. And I responded to him. I said, wow, that's an awesome compliment. Thank you. And then Pool Chuck responded to that said, I've watched other YouTube channels that RV from Quartzite. And I agree. Well done, sir. Well, thank you, Pool Chuck. And Beat Farmer. Robin Goff says, thanks for showing us the new DG store. Store options are always good to have nearby. Yeah, it's always good to have options. Jay Cruiser. Um, yay, this is, <laughs> okay, I did a bonus video last night. Cheryl and I were out, um, we were doing some errands for a friend, and um, we had both found out there was this new restaurant in time that served camel burgers, and we thought it was a joke. And we found out the other day, it's no joke, it's real camel meat, it's a thing, it's real. So we said, let's go, let's go get a camel burger. So we went. <laughs> and I popped the video out last night and um, and Jay Cruiser says, yay, I finally got the first like on a video. I just recently found your content and find it very informative. Thank you for all your hard work to help those of us who are still in the planning stages daydreaming about becoming full timers. Um, <clears throat> so this, uh, this is... Um, called Scooters. It's a restaurant on Main Street right next to Patty's, um, Patty's Propane and Patty's RV Park and across the street from the Dollar Store. Um, family Dollar. Right across the street from fam it's Family Dollar, I think. Um, and last two years there was just kind of a hamburger joint there, but the hamburger joint is now just their cook kitchen and there's a building next to it that is now the restaurant and this woman opened it, and it's not just, don't freak out, it's not just camel burgers. It's, that's sort of the hook. It's a marketing thing. They didn't expect to sell more. Than, she said, I didn't expect to sell more than one or two a day at, at peak. And surprisingly, people want it. They want to try it. She's got regular hamburger sandwiches. She's open for breakfast, and she has a extensive menu. And, um... 
like the waitress said, what we try to do is have offerings that no one else in town has. And they had like fish and chips and tostadas and all sorts of breakfast things and pancakes and waffles and bur breakfast burritos. And it just went on and on and on and on. And I can't wait to go back and, and try more stuff. But I did um, have a camel burger. I did. It was really, really good. The The taste of the meat was unique, not overpowering, but a little bit different and really, really good. I loved it. And um, it's expensive because it, it, you, I went online when I was there. And if you just want to buy, you know, have ham, camel meat, you know, approved USD approved camel meat that's imported, um, it's $17 a pound. Uh, and that's about what she was charging. I can't remember what the was. She was charging close to 20 bucks. So she's not making money on those camel burgers. Trust me. And her, she had these called rosemary and they call them rosemary fries. And it's spiced with rosemary and a little bit of garlic. And the sauce that for the fries, oh, I go on and on. Jane Smith, even after rave reviews, I'm not sure about eating camel, but I'd love to try the menu anyway. Clover is adorable. That's I was there with Cheryl, and Cheryl's dog is Clover, and I put Clover on camera. Um, <laughs> Philip says, Philip Williams says, you could eat camel burgers on hump day like you did today. It was hump day. It was Wednesday. Um, Teresa Jameson is, gives me a little love heart on my boon, uh, heating video. Ken Gray says the burgers look very good. I hope my I like my burger medium well, but still definitely on my list. Um, Joe Brown said, um, "Tell them to call the burgers humpback, and they can make single or double humps." <laughs> That's very funny. I did I did deliver the owner a couple hump jokes. Lori Roar, good to see you too. Envy in your weather. Lori's a, a, a friends with. Um, myself and um, Cheryl. So that's what that's good to see you too. Love the firework options. It seems non sequitur, doesn't it? That's because it's on Perump Tour for Visitors, a two or three year old video I did in Perump and it had fireworks on it. That's from Hank the City Pug. Debbie Weckler, I enjoyed your video. Thank you. And that was on Camel Burgers. And Dan Doe, just found your channel and sub. We're headed to Quartzsite in January, our second year. Great job with your videos. Thank you. Said you're welcome. That's on Camel, Camel Burgers. HHAM, call it a hump day burger and discount it on hump day. <laughs> I think she's heard them all by now. Um, for those of you that don't know, no, part of the culture of Quartzsite was our camels. Because there's the um, story of this guy, Hi Jolly that um, had a contract with the army. The army was thinking of using camels in the field, World War II. And um, there was like a training ground there for the camels and the whole idea kind of failed. Um, but he became um, a, after his death, he became an icon of quartzite and he's heavily associated with camels. And you'll see on the iconic quartzite signs, camels. Bradley Whitehall, excellent video. I like they have a nice variety and good selection of food choices. My only complaint is I wish they had a simpler menu option. Instead of thumbing through pages and pages of a menu, keep it simple. I'm glad you guys like the Camel Burger. We love the Camel Burger. Um, John, uh, John Leach says sales tax in Q is over 10% because I'm a stickler for accuracy. I said close. 9.1% in Arizona portion is 5.6. La Paz County is 1 and Quartzsite is 2.5. So that's close. You don't get, in, in, with rounding, you don't get any closer to 10 than 9 or 11. So he wasn't wrong, but I wanted to give Quartzsite the 0.8 benefit of the doubt. My Nomadic Dream. Great video. I ate there a few days ago. I did not try the Camel Burger, but their fries are really good. Yeah, the fries were good. That's my Nomadic Dream. That's, 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 the fries were amazing. George Hatton. Over the top. Thanks. And that was Sun Surprises Dad with that Camaro. 
and uh, I did a short a long time ago. My um, it, it was called my loyal travel companion, and uh, he says truth. So if you want to know what that is, seek out my. It's titled my loyal travel companion companion in my short section. Pup Camper 58. That is Cheryl, who was with me and ate a camel burger. I enjoyed the adventure with Rob. Yes, the burgers were absolutely delicious. Definitely will go back again. You've never had a camel burger. You really need to go try one. Um, Lori Rohr, again, our friend. Loved watching you and Dottie on your desert walk. Brings back great memories. And that was a, my, uh, a walk with Dottie. And Prisaloo, yum! Sounds delicious. I hope they are prosperous and still prosperous and still there when we finally make it to Quartzsite. And she comments. Again. She has three comments in a row here. And another one sounds like the Camel Burgers are yummy. And Clover wants to know where his Camel Burger is. And you know he seemed a little hungry. And what you didn't probably see is in my left hand. I didn't finish my burger. I had a third of it left and it was wrapped in a napkin. <laughs> And Clover was like, what's that? What's that in your hand? <laughs> sea Breeze. Um, uh, I had a short on uh, my outdoor uh, propane fire in, in, in the morning where Dottie and I were keeping warm. It looks like Q. It was cold last night, but sunburn weather today. Yes, ma'am. Todd Fossey. Hope to get back soon. Let me know when the Big Ten is going to be. Let's pop your hood up to keep the rats out of the engine. And I said, well, no rat problems here. This will be season three in this exact spot. I had I had rodent problems in New Mexico, though. They did chew through my wire, so I got to do something up there. But here, not a problem. I mean, as long as you keep away from the vegetation, no problems. Big Tent is January 18th through 26th. So 60 Cloud, new grocery store and burger joint. Awesome. All right. And that's, that's Perump Cheryl. <laughs> I'm not wrong. And that's Perump Cheryl. And she'll be up here in, I think, a week or so. So we'll have Cheryl, Perump Cheryl and Quartzite Cheryl. That'd be confusing. Maybe we, we got to do something about that. Rob Hebs. I remember years ago, meat markets were trying to get horse meat to be popular. As you can tell, it didn't go over. Bison burgers are somewhat popular. I don't see camel being popular. Um, the, they, they get their camel from Australia. You would think the highest quality would be like Mideast, but no. I mean, you can get it from the Mideast, but the highest quality for some reason is Australian camel, camel meat. Um... So much stuff that this is on the quartzite visit to the new DG market. So much stuff that doesn't fit the senior crowd. So much soda and energy drinks. Well, what doesn't sell? They will quit stocking and gradually le learn what sells. Thanks for the tour, Rob. I, I don't know about the accuracy of that. I have no idea. But what I do know is these Dollar General stores, corporate, they know what sells. They're, they're, they depend on it. And uh, you're right. If, the, if stuff doesn't sell, they will adjust very quickly. Um, OWK with three zeros um, on heating. You can turn it all off at night and just turn it on again in the morning. A really good down comforter is a wonderful thing and really more comfortable to sleep than nighttime heat. Then there is the small one-person tent inside the RV for really cold nights, but I have Slept cold all winter with a good down comforter, no problem. Doesn't freeze much here. Well, that's another strategy. Not mine, but a, another strategy that works for someone, right? Um, so, um, you know what? Um, I didn't see this, but it's a nonsensical... Um, uh, comment with a very nasty handle that is um, political. So um, this uh, this user is going to be hidden from the channel. All right, uh, Randy, great menu. There's zero chance I would eat camel myself. Randy, you want to eat camel? 
<laughs> but I'm always interested in new things. Great review, and Clover is adorable. Um, yeah, it's all right. A lot of people don't like. I had rattlesnake once. A lot of people won't do that. I don't think I'll have it twice. And I probably won't have another camel burger either, mostly because it's very expensive. You know, I'm, I'm not rich, but I'll recommend it to someone try it once. But um, I'm pretty, I'm pretty dish, traditional too, Randy. Um, love the trip to Dollar General. That's from Pamela Knoll. And the Concho Network, to calculate how long a 12 volt, um, 100 amp hour battery can run a 9 amp device, and I think he's talking about like a furnace. Take the runtime equals battery capacity, load amps, runtime. If you want to go through this, um, I'm not going to read it all to you because you'll get lost in it. Um, but it's very long, and he very kindly shows the formula for figuring out how long your battery is going to run. Um, and he has another thing. A body heater is not ideal. It generates excessive humidity, consumes oxygen, and poses a carbon monoxide hazard. Diesel heaters are not much safer and more economical, are a much safer and more economical alternative. Um, so, uh, propane does generate moisture, and I had to delete probably a half a dozen nasty comments about how I'm introducing all this harmful moisture into my RV. And let me just say for the record that that's not true. And I will prove it to you. I'd almost move the camera, but I'm looking up my at my temperature gauge. It's There's an inside and an outside. Okay, The heater's on. It's been on all night. It's been on since 9 o'clock last night. And it's going full blast right now. And the outdoor humidity is 10%. The indoor humidity is 10%. So there are environments where propane heat will generate a lot of moisture inside your RV. And if you don't vent that, you can have mold problems. You can have all kinds. All the problems that come with excessive moisture will come. So if I'm in that kind of environment um, where there is higher ambient humidity, I will be using my onboard furnace, which vents, out, vents outside and probably cracks some windows. Because I've, I've had it when I was in Virginia, it was very humid and cold in the winter, where I used my onboard furnace, which vents to the outside, but still I'd wake up and the inside of the window would be, would be just sopping with, with moisture. Um, anyway, um, and the ones I had to delete, delete were the troop of armchair experts. Um, so I thought the CO2 sensor had to be close to floor level, okay? That's again confusion with um, CO2 is carbon dioxide. Nobody needs a carbon dioxide. That's what we breathe out. We breathe in oxygen, we breathe out carbon dioxide. We don't need a sensor for that. CO is carbon monoxide, a potentially deadly gaseous byproduct of combustion. So you need a detection for that if you have any combustion going on, like my heater. So, um, and I read earlier the, um, the, the official government guidelines for it. Um, NFPA, National Fire Protection Association, has a similar guideline, um, which I couldn't find in, in the moment. But if you want to look for that, it's fine. Um, the carbon monoxide five foot level and they also say ceiling is fine i have both both um, what is low is propane and all the propane detectors that are required to be built in to every new rv and for years it's been that way they are all at floor level and they work great i have you know bumped my my um stove nozzle and the stove is up you know four four feet counter height and my propane detector is around the corner down on the floor and it goes off pretty quickly so that means that propane gas immediately goes to floor level 
and that's where it's detected. And that's good. By the time it's detected, there's nothing at breathing level yet, right? Remember, CO2, the chemical sign for CO2 is carbon dioxide. For carbon monoxide, it's CO. I know it's confusing. Um, M. Campbell says, uh, and it does it all in an elderly mo mother's voice. That's the icing on the cake. This is good side of AI. Okay, this is a recent thing. I released a positive news video that didn't make me cry. It made me laugh. And it's called Revenge. <laughs> it's, it's a company that used artificial intelligence to create a fake grandmother on the phone to fool scammers and keep them on the phone for up to 40 minutes with absolute nonsense and, and made up information. And I think it's the greatest thing I've read in a long time. Um, uh, so, and the long form video today was Jeep adventure with old friends in damning no it's a great video. I love this format. So it was a little bit different. So I, my friend Daryl and Jim and his new wife V, the four of us went in Daryl's new Jeep and we went it for the first time. I went out into the desert around Quartzsite, into the wilderness part. I've never done it before and I was so excited to do it. So the first part is me with the camera inside and we're talking about stuff while we're going, while we're getting to where we're doing it. Then at the end of the video, I turn the camera around and I, and I do the whole trip, hour and 10 minute trip, um, sped up to like seven minutes with some non-royalty music behind it. That's a very different format. I warn people ahead of time. If you don't want to sit and watch no, you just want to watch desert going back, going by really fast with some music in the background. This is for you. If it's for not, stop here. Don't don't watch it. So Danny so far liked it. Let's refresh, see if anybody else has done it. Another one. Fun day in the desert, trekking with Dev and Mike. So that's it. 52 minutes. <laughs> these things, I got to, what am I going to do if the I keep getting all these thousands of views and comments? I can't like have an endless comment video. So maybe I have an idea. Maybe I should be a little bit more brief in my comments on the comments. And that's my comment on my comment on the comments. See you tomorrow.